Hello and welcome to Midweek Matters. This week, we will try to unpack the implications of the information technology, intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics code rules 2021 for our democracy. What to make of the new IT rules 2021 notified by the union government towards the end of last month? I saw an interview of Sri Prakash Javdekar, the INB minister, to a TV channel on this subject. Minister's summary of the new rules and their defense ran on the following lines. It is only the objectionable posts that need to be taken down in 36 hours. The first originator of mischievous information to be disclosed by the tech companies. They are those that are related to issues of sovereignty and integrity of India, the security of the state, public order, relations with foreign states, or rape, sexually explicit content. Sounds good. But who decides which posts constitute threats to these? Can the government also be a fact checker? An inter-ministerial committee is the final forum for appeal. It has representatives from the Ministry of Women and Child Welfare, Ministry of Law and Justice, Home Affairs, Electronics and Information Technology, Defense, and the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team as members. Executive in the disguise of judiciary? The INB secretary has extraordinary powers. They can take down items from portals without notice. No explanation needed. The platforms need to comply with either a court order or, and this is more important, the certified authority. An intermediary platform like Twitter and Facebook, WhatsApp and Telegram will have to keep someone's posts for 180 days even after, even after they exit the platform. The originator of the message should be tracked by the intermediary. And we do know that many political parties have huge digital armies these days. They can overwhelm a news portal or a platform with complaints. And what if, what if the government chooses to act on these and pull down the content or even the portal? OTT platforms will have to self-certify content that they offer and label them with the categories provided by the government. Nobody compels them. We are introduced to a new and quite mitigative terminology like soft touch regulation, as though it is as soft as the feel of a Mysore silk stole. The minister, to be fair, put up a very respectable defense of these new rules. He was cool. He said, that the present government was the most democratic by far in the more than 70 years of independent India's history. There was honesty in his face and eyes and his demeanor when he said it. He said he was trying to bring accountability, level playing field, curb obscenity, arrest anti-national activities. Yes, you would surely think, shouldn't these platforms be made accountable and anti-nationals curbed? He said he welcomed criticism. Everybody, he said, was free to speak truth to the power. He said that everything that's being done is according to the existing laws. I almost felt safe that these rules would do no harm as long as such governments as the present one with its unimpeachable democratic credentials are in office. And was only worried about what if, what if some undemocratic opposition elements get into power sometime in future. But just as the viewers were like me were almost getting convinced, the minister lost his school badly. His face hardened, he raised his voice, he seemed rattled. The pliant interviewer was unable to conceal his surprise at his sudden change of tone and mood of the minister. The mention of an internet advocacy group made all the difference to the minister. That was when the minister gave away his game. He bared his intolerance. It became clear that he and the government were, were unsettled by 
their inability to tame the digital media platforms and the bodies that protect them. People like us are given, to, given the impression that the government is taking on the evil tech chains, battling out with them, making them answerable to our national sovereign power. If that were so, the government would have focused its attention on the privacy and data protection legislation that's languishing in the Joint Parliamentary Committee. It would have considered the various concerns and anxieties expressed by the internet activists. The kind of data hawking indulged in by the tech platforms, monetization of personal data, inadequate norms for anonymizing data, surreptitious listening to our offline conversations by the apps, picking up keywords from private mails in order to push targeted ads next to our mailbox. These, these should have been the concerns. And search engine giants would have been the wild horses that the government should have attempted to tame. Instead, the predominant aim of the government seems to be push the platforms to give it our data and take down our content. It wants the posts that are critical and inconvenient to it to be not just taken down, but the originator to be identified. One can therefore understand why the government wants these rules to be notified much before the Privacy and Data Protection Bill sees the light of the day and why it did not want a discussion in Parliament or in civil society. Internet democratized the space for ideas and dissent. It did away with gatekeepers. It made sharing and circulation of content affordable to individuals like you and me. One need not be a media mogul or be at the mercy of a media mogul to reach millions of readers and viewers. One need not have an expensive establishment. In other words, democracy need not be hostage to conventional media houses who in turn are hostage to governments and big businesses. For without their patronage and advertisement revenue, they can't run. Does level playing field mean making the digital news platforms also like the conventional media platforms, thereby obliterating the advantages the digital technology bestowed on freedom of expression? Misuse? Yes, everything is liable to be misused. However, however, any misuse by civil society is much more tolerable than misuse by governments, is it not? In any case, the IPC and the extant press council norms are sufficient to stop the misuse if there is any. Let's not allow the government to abort the many springs and dawns that digital media can promise. In any case, the government cannot and should not bring in these rules without proper consultation. There is no parliamentary oversight also. Let there be discussion in parliament and in civil society. Government should initiate it instead of telling us it knows our interests much better than we ourselves do. If you have not seen the 2018 work of Harvard scholars Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Ziblatt, How Democracies Die, I strongly urge you to urgently take a look at it. They show that the days of obliterating democracies by military coups and suspending constitutions are passé. To extend their argument, we don't anymore need declarations of state of emergency to subvert democracy. It's the gradual subversion of institutions, slow creeping in of new laws, and labeling criticism as subversion, and questioning the patriotism of the opposition. These are the methods that modern leaders increasingly adopt to kill democracy and tighten their grip over power. It's not any more crude acts on the face operations, not pre-dawn knocks on the door. It's imperceptible steps to constrict freedoms that smother democracy in modern day democratic republics. In the 60s and 70s, foreign direct investments, FDI, was not in currency. Discourse on political economy then was hardly familiar with it. Therefore, Mrs. Indira Gandhi had to show us foreign hand 
behind anything that was unsettling to her. Today, our Prime Minister is lucky. He could use the same trick by using the term FTI to mean foreign destructive ideology. He is lucky because he could emulate Mrs. Gandhi without seeming to do it. Farmers' agitation is FDI, JNU is full of FDI, toolkit is FDI, in other words, any dissent is FDI. In the light of the FDI that our Prime Minister talked about in Parliament and the so-called leaked GOM report, these IT rules 2021 are only baby steps, one at a time, but they are sure-footed steps. When the current government ministers allude to Mrs. Gandhi's emergency and say they haven't suspended constitutional provisions, fundamental rights, they sound right. And those who cry that we are living under an undeclared emergency sound false and exaggerating. But here is the trick. The government wants us to look for something that's not there and something that need not be there in our times. Subversion of democracy is a much more subtle process now. Neo-authoritarianism comes with a smile, with a copy of constitution in hand. It looks benign and what's more dreadful is that it can seduce people into believing that it is indeed good and necessary. Digital news media can expose this. They are the main hope for such a pushback. Therefore, to me, it looks like a spectre is haunting this government, the spectre of digital news. That's all we have time for this week. We'll be back again next week on Wednesday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Stay safe and take good care of yourselves. Until then, bye.